In this video demonstration, we're going to explore the sequential texture baking process in 3D Coat. Now what it is is a tool that employs a clever technique to help you overcome the problems that are normally associated with baking multiple objects in a scene. Now you have an example of that here with the visor, the bracelets, the belt, and so on. Now, these will cause some baking issues just because it's occluding the actual ray casting. And I'll demonstrate that by going to the Retopo room. You can see I have my UVs here on my different UV sets. I already have them set up. And I'll just go ahead straight to the Retopo menu. Go all the way down. Let's choose Bake with Normal Map and Per Pixel Painting. I'm going to uncheck Local Occlusion. So I'm going to click OK. And I'll just go with the defaults for the moment. And you can see the progress here in the upper left hand corner as well as the progress bar. Okay, so we can now go to the paint room where we merged everything and I'm going to turn the lighting up just a bit. Okay. Now from a distance it does not appear that there is a major problem, but as we draw a little closer where these objects occluded one another, you can definitely see uh, some issues here. What I'm going to do is start hiding some of the materials and you can begin to see some of these baking issues. Okay. Definitely can see some here, and especially in the visor area, it's really bad. Okay, and this is not something that's exclusive to 3D Coat. It's a naturally occurring problem in the texture baking engines of any 3D application, simply because anything that interferes with the ray casting is going to cause uh, these types of problems. So, in other applications, what you would have to do, or even in uh, 3D Coat previously, uh, before this tool was introduced, what you would have to do is just bake them out individually. And that can be very time consuming, especially if you have a model that has a lot of individual components. Now, if you're working with uh, something like a mech robot, you can have dozens and dozens of layers. Same thing with assault rifles for games and so on. So, if you had to bake one at a time, this could literally take you hours uh, to complete. So what I'm going to do is uh, go back to object. I'm just going to delete that and we'll start over. And um, I will start deleting all these paint layers as well. Okay, so we're going to start fresh. Go back to the Retopo room. This time what I want to do is point out an additional technique that you might try uh, in an external application is what's called Explode the Bake. And what you would do is take your high poly objects in the lower poly version, you would basically move them individually and explode them so that you can bake it in one simple process. So let's go ahead and take a look at, this is a, a plugin for 3ds Max that helps to simplify the process. Okay, and you can see it's separating these, all these components have both the lower poly and the higher poly attached. Setting this up though individually or manually in another application could take a long time. 
So those are two ways to approach it, either manually bake one at a time or try to explode the object. Again, this is a, a nice solution because it automates the process. The 3D coat does it a little bit different. It's a, it's a uh, just another technique to help automate the entire process and to make it much quicker. What it's going to do is in, instead of separating the individual objects, it's just going to essentially turn on and turn off the corresponding layers. So when you check use name correspondence for baking, what 3D code is going to do is it's going to internally turn off all of these other layers in a sequence. It's going to turn them off and bake only the body with the body, visor with the visor, and so on. And it's going to do this all in a sequence but it's still just a one-step process. So, exactly how does this work? Uh, first of all, I do want to point out, in this case, I want some of the components, such as the face, to be part of the body. If you want this to be baked as one object, it's going to bake all these sub-layers, these sub-voxel layers, as if it's just one object. If that's what you want, make sure you have these as child layers. As you can see I have the boots, the body lower, the body upper, the face, and so on. These are child layers and so when 3D Coat goes through sequentially it's going to see this body as just one individual object. Okay, so let's go ahead and check groups and volumes correspondent. So basically it's going to do a name check for me. In this case it's telling me I'm good to go. So, if you plan to use this, just keep in mind as you are building or constructing your retopo layers to make sure that the name corresponds with the proper voxel object that you want to bake. And if for some reason they don't match, you can always just double click, just use your hotkeys, your control C, and go over here to your corresponding layer, double click, and control V. Let's go ahead and bake this out. I'm going to click use name correspondence for baking. This will tell 3D Coat again to go through this automated process. And now I'll go ahead and go through the same step that I normally would take trying to bake this all at once. Again, for demonstration purposes, I'm not too concerned about baking occlusion at this stage. And again, I'll leave the defaults. And you'll see how it will go in a sequence here. And also how quickly it went through it. Okay, that was less than 20 seconds. And upon initial inspection, it appears to have done a very good job, but let's hide some of the materials to take a closer look. So as you can see, we no longer have the problems that previously occurred. So this could save you a ton of time, especially when working with models with lots of subcomponents. I hope this helps, and thank you for watching this demonstration of the sequential texture baking process in 3D Code.